Do you know that feeling when a company makes a really good product, but there are just a few things that make it not so perfect? Well, that's exactly how I feel about the PS5 DualSense Touch controller. So I remember wanting a pro controller for a long time, and I was always jealous of my friends who had scuffs and battle beavers because I always felt like it made them better than me at the game. And when I got my PS5, I was actually hoping that Sony would re-release the back button attachments that they made for the PS4 controller. Does anybody remember that? That thing was awesome, and it only cost like 20 bucks. So once I heard the news that Sony was making its own pro controller, I was so hyped. I pre-ordered it right away, and once it came in a few months later, I booted up Apex and I instantly became a pro gamer. Well, maybe that part's not so true, but I did hit Masters for the first time in my life. But anyways, I've had this controller for about a year now, and while it's definitely not perfect, I do think that Sony came very close into making the best pro controller. And in this video, I'm going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly with the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. So let's kick things off starting with the good. Right out of the box, I love the case for the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. It's a hard shell, it looks and feels so premium, and I know this is the first Pro Controller that I own, but I was really impressed once I took this thing out of the box. And the controller itself also has a very premium feel. I love the weight to it, it doesn't feel cheap at all in your hands. I love the etched buttons and the designs, it's the finer details that count y'all. I also love the addition of the back paddles, they're very easy to reach for my hands, and you can also swap them out for domes if you prefer them over the paddles. Overall, the design and shape of this controller is very similar to the regular DualSense, which is why it's also compatible with most of its accessories. Moving on to the software, which is definitely in the good category, the UI is very intuitive to use and I was able to bind my buttons to the back paddles and never have to go to the setup menu again. It was just so easy to use. Another reason that I really like the software is that you can create different button mappings and assign them to different profiles on the controller itself, which you can swap through in-game very easily. Whatever button mappings or profiles that you set on your PS5, it's also remembered when you plug this controller into the PC so that you can do some PC gaming with the same button profiles. Moving on to the last item in the good category, which is probably the most defining feature of this controller, the swappable thumbsticks. As soon as I saw that this controller had swappable thumbsticks in the trailer video, it was an instant buy for me. I think that this is the most important feature on a pro controller because who wants to spend $200 on a controller just for the sticks to drift and you have to send it back and then wait weeks to get your controller back? That was my biggest fear and that was the main reason why I bought this. The thumbstick modules are so easy to replace on this controller. You just open it up from the bottom, swap it out, and you're done. You don't need any special tools or anything like that. Even though I haven't had any stick drift with this controller in the year or so that I've had it, it's really nice knowing that I can easily swap them out if I do get stick drift and it only cost me like $20. And lastly, I love that they included different thumbstick heights with this controller and you can swap them out to get the most out of your gameplay or if you just want to feel the most comfortable. Alright, now it's time to move to the bad or not so good category about this controller. And let's start with the battery life. Hear me out, hear me out. The battery life isn't that bad, which is why I didn't put it on the ugly and I just put it on the bad. What's funny is that I recently made a TikTok video about this controller and many people in the comments said that the battery life was by far the worst thing about this controller. But let me explain why I put this in the bad and not the ugly category. So I've had my controller for over a year now and it lasts at least three hours without needing a charge. And I did some quick research on what is the average gaming session and it turns out there was a study conducted in August 2022 that showed that the average gaming session is one to two hours. Given that the average playthrough session is one to two hours and my controller after a year lasts at least three hours, I think that this battery life is actually okay. <laughs> now I know this isn't as good as other controllers that have like 20 hours of battery life, but it's really not that bad, especially since you can play this while it's plugged in. Now the other item that I put in the bad category is the price. $200 MSRP for this controller is a little bit high, especially considering that there are other pro controllers on the market that mostly have the same features that are a little bit cheaper, but this one is Sony, I guess. <laughs> now I think that if they made this controller around 160 MSRP, it would be absolutely perfect and there would be no question for everyone who has a PS5 to go pick this up. But I guess I can understand a little bit since this is a Sony product, it works seamlessly with your PS5 and it does have some features that other controllers don't. The price isn't too outrageous which is why I still bought this at the end of the day. Finally, it's time to move on to the ugly or what I think is the worst parts about this controller. Now these are my two main personal issues with this controller and I think that if these items were fixed, it would make the controller perfect for me. And the first item is 
This controller does not have Hall Effect thumbsticks. Why are there so many Pro Controllers that still do not have Hall Effect thumbsticks? Those of you that don't know, Hall Effect thumbsticks are not new technology. They've been around for years now. And what it basically means is that the thumbsticks themselves use magnets instead of springs, which are much more likely to fail over time. Using these springs, or also called potentiometers, is the main reason why these controllers get stick drift after you use them for a couple of months or years. But I'm lying here. We all know the reason why these controllers don't have Hall Effect thumbsticks, and that's because of money. Just like this dual synthetic controller, for example, which if it starts to get stick drift, you have to pay $20 to get a new thumbstick module. And it's even worse with controllers that don't have swappable thumbsticks because you either need to buy a new controller or send it out and get it fixed or try to fix it yourself. Now I understand that having Hall Effect thumbsticks on the PS5 DualSense S controller may defeat the purpose of having swappable thumbsticks a little bit since they are less likely to fail, but this would still be a huge win for consumers. Now this last item is personally my biggest gripe with this controller, and it's the fact that this controller only comes with two back paddles instead of four. I was really sad to find this out, honestly, especially considering that most of the other pro controllers already have four back buttons. Why couldn't Sony make an option with just four back buttons or paddles? Now I like to play a lot of first person shooter games like Apex, Overwatch, or even Call of Duty, and it's always important in those games to keep your thumbs on the actual thumbsticks when you're in the fight, and the back buttons help because you don't have to press the face buttons anymore with your thumbs, you can just use the back buttons to jump, slide, or use an item. For example, when I play Apex Legends, I set my back buttons to jump and crouch, but I really wish I had two more back buttons so that I could set it to heal or interact. I know some people are fine with having only two back buttons, but I wish that Sony just gave us the option to have four. And maybe I could understand that a little bit better if this was like a $150 controller, but this is a $200 Pro controller, and I wish that it had a lot of the other features that the other $200 Pro controllers also have. Anyways, my rant is over. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening, but I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment below what you think the worst part of this controller is, or if you have another favorite controller that you like to use every day, let me know below and maybe I'll check that out too. Thanks again for tuning into this video. If you found it helpful, I would love if you could like and subscribe. I'm currently trying to grow my small channel and every little bit helps. I really appreciate y'all. Take care.